Um, hello. Hey. Someone fell on my head. And these are both my dogs. Um, so I haven't done a video in forever. And I decided to do one because I feel like I have at least one good thing to say. Um, or one thing that I feel like I've kind of seen whisperings of on some, um, like autism TikToks and stuff like that. But I wanted to do, I guess, just like a short little spiel. Maybe I'll do some longer ones someday, maybe not. So, yeah, so I wanted to do a quick spiel just on DMT, autism, melatonin, and then some like diet stuff. I'll link the two major kind of study-ish things that I'm talking about. Uh, one's actually like a longer book. Um, but there are some cool studies out there that talk about uh, melatonin as like um, a neurobiological underpinning of autistic neurotypes. It's kind of fucked because they talk about autism, you know, as like, if we don't figure out how it works, then how are we gonna treat it? Um, when in my opinion, if the mechanism they're detailing is actually correct, if anyone needs to be treated, it's like low-key not us. Um, but either way, um, there's some cool research that points the idea that perhaps um, autistic individuals have a differing, oh, I goose, a different way of creating, processing, synthesizing, what have you, melatonin, and therefore, instead of creating melatonin we hyper uh manufacture more or less dmt and if you've ever done dmt or if you've ever watched any of my other videos i'm a pretty strong proponent that autistic people seem like they're just tripping really hard um yeah like it just personally personal experience wise telling me that autistic people have more dmt running around in their fucking veins and in their brain uh makes sense to me it checks out um but anyway so you know a cool thought and something to you know i guess ponder because i think it's interesting and then also thinking about some other research there's some cool dietitian and like anthropology work on how our diets have changed over time and how that's changed the production of serotonin and changed our pineal gland some changed our sleep rhythms things like that and it seems like if you synthesize those there's kind of a strong argument for in oh, human large-scale evolutionary shift away from excess dmt production um and excess serotonin production into kind of where we're at now um so I just think there's something to be said for the fact that it's very possible that there were large portions of the population before, in fact, maybe majorities, if not super majorities of the population that had more autistic neurotypes than they do now. But anyways, I just think it's a cool thing to think about. I thought you might think it's a cool thing to think about. I think there needs to be more things on the internet that discuss it, so I'm discussing it. Autism, DNT, serotonin, melatonin, diet, uh, hunters and gatherers, fruit and vegetables, living in forests, etc. Um, and just like rhythms in general. Plus, you know, I just think it should be said that, you know, doing a study on autism and telling me like, you're gonna figure me out so you can treat me and show me how I'm defective is like, it's not just like silly, but it really like motivates me to keep studying the things I'm studying because I don't want people to talk about me like that. Uh, anyways, that's today's video. I love you, God loves you, and that was a quick one, and you're welcome for that.